You know, there's a mark that each piece bears that reflects the resilience the designer has had to undergo to be able to create that for you. There's a sense of quality and care and consideration that's embedded. You know, there's a depth to them. My name is Nisha Kanabar, and I'm the CEO and founder of Industry Africa. I was born and raised as a fourth generation Tanzanian to Indian heritage parents in Dar es Salaam, a warm coastal city rooted in a mix of Swahili, Arab, and Indian cultures. It's played a huge part in shaping my view of the world, integrated and diverse in its creativity from its art scene to its food and its music. What's really interesting is you rarely find labels here because it can be so many things at once, brimming with opportunities and often underappreciated beauty. Every experience that I've encountered imprinted in me something different. But I'd say where it really began was how taken I was by the power and role of media in newer markets and its potential in creating communities and transforming societal and cultural perceptions. I guess you can say I've always been a storyteller. After high school, my instincts just took flight and I ended up going to Parsons School of Design in New York, working in fashion publishing across multiple markets at media houses like American Vogue and Vogue India. When talking about African fashion and its unique identity, we're talking about a multitude of cultures and influences from 54 independent ecosystems through decades of exploitation and resource limitations. Through that kind of resilience comes something quite exceptional. It's important to remember, however, that a designer can still be African and not be forced to conform to a traditional worldview of what the global population and media might identify as African. By establishing Industry Africa, I kind of intended to create a channel for authentic connectivity, both regionally and globally, to address the media bias we were experiencing, the gaping lack of global presence, the ignorance on even the most simplest of, of its vernacular. The narrative of luxury is tangibly different today. It's no longer limited to price point or European heritage. It's about provenance, authenticity, I think that as the industry and its people took ownership of their own stories, we saw that the world also shifted in its own way. Think of the global demand for circularity, the increased desire the world has for diversity. Think of the rise of the conscious consumer who aligns their purchases with their values. When I curate, you know, I'm looking for pieces and products that tell a story, but then it takes those stories, it works past some of the more obvious ways to manifest those stories and it creates something. You're looking at incredible textures that might come in through unexpected elements from a purely visual standpoint. I personally love when labels defy what is expected. They reinvent their roots, their techniques, their textiles to create entirely new design codes. Look at Nigeria's Emi Kazbet or Lisa Folawio.
There are so many things that give Africa's fashion scene its edge. The dynamic resilience amongst us is what kind of sets us apart. It's a raw, indescribably magnetic pulse that people within it are proud to be a part of, almost like a really profound secret. Yeah. Yeah.